Alright, what up y'all? It's metaphor back for more. You take the raw represent everyone's you and not verse. So we're gonna do a video on uh, Gemini in the eighth house, <clears throat> which is Scorpio rising series, right? And Scorpio being a fixed water, um, being either stubborn or consistent upon their own way of feeling, you know. Um, Gemini being mutable air, being able to adapt to other people's ways of communicating, communicated and thinking, right? And that'd be your eighth house. So that's the way that you transform, right? And also the way that you are behind the scenes, the way that you hold secrets and the things that are private to you in a in a way of maybe a bit of desire. So we could say that you desire a certain communication, right? And to say that Gemini being here, it may not be so behind the scenes to everybody else. Like, you're a personal... Okay, so Scorpio is birthed in the 8th house, is what I'm trying to explain. And then your personality being in the 1st house there with Scorpio, right? Pretty much you're already a bit of a... Not dark, but maybe introverted... Maybe not introverted. I want to say, like, mysterious. Okay, yeah, mysterious is a good one for it. Because it's not to say that every Scorpio rising is dark. It's just that you may not know everything about them, so they may be a bit, bit mysterious, right? But this eighth house way of transformation is going to be the conversation. And it's very interesting. Um, so to say, maybe you have, like, uh your sun, moon, or ascendant here, I mean your sun or moon here, maybe even like your Venus, right? In the 8th house. It's going to be like, with Venus, it's going to be an appreciation of communication of that behind the scenes, deep, dark nature, but it's going to be two sides to it. You're going to be like communicating with some people about certain things, others about other things, and then maybe one or two people about everything. You see what I'm saying? So... One way that you could look at your sextiles here is your 6th and your 10th house, which is obviously the earth houses. Your schedule being the 6th house, right? And you got um, Gemini being here in the 8th house, you'd have Taurus in that 7th. And then in that 6th house, you'd have Aries, right? So, the way that you put everything on the schedule is in this area in nature. So, initiating and creating new ways, right? A new schedule at all times. So you want to, you're going to be communicating with others about their schedule and how it works. You see what I'm saying? And then whenever it works correctly, right, for others, you're going to be like, okay, I'm going to take what they did since I communicated about, like, you know, my deep, dark way of my mom would do it. You see what I'm saying? Or behind the scene nature. Because it's communication already. I already know one side of it. So actually doing it in my sixth house, right, I'm going to bring a whole new way to it, right? So when you bring this whole new way... You're going to be able to fucking have a schedule that is unique to any and unique to any circumstance, right? Due to communicate with others about how they went about it, right? And if you wanted to transform your career, which would be, uh, I want to say Leo, but you go, I'll just you know, count it out. Gemini, 8th house, and you have ninth house in motherfucking uh, Cancer. Yeah, 10th house in Leo, right? This 10th house being in Leo is a fixed nature, right? Like I said before, uh, breaking down the scorpion uh, nature is that fixed water, and then this would be that fixed fire. So maybe a consistent or stubborn upon your way of broadcasting yourself or how the way that other people see you, right? So it's like you, the only way that you're going to bring this new expression is if you communicate about this behind the scene nature. Right, how other people may be even seeing you, right? The other side of the of the secrets or other other side of the behind the scenes, right? And that's that Gemini aspect. And once you bring that other side to it, you can actually create this this uh, this blueprint of this expression that you really want to be true to yourself with. You see what I'm saying? Because Leo is like the campfire, right? So everybody wants to hang out around the campfire, but if you're not being yourself around the campfire, it can be uncomfortable. So just if you being yourself, you want to find a new way, 
not maybe not a new way, but a way that is relatable to others, like that fixed fire likes to stay in its own way, like and have others that are uh, are of that ilk um, come around the fire and you know make the fire even bigger, right? Everybody like a big old bonfire, right? So then you have your uh, your eighth house in Gemini, right? This communication, you're gonna be able to communicate this and transform this status and career um, of Leo by seeing the other side to it, and you can bring this this uh, this new way of bringing the fire. But it's already it's not really new; it's already there. You see what I'm saying? And it's just somebody else hasn't seen it yet. So, yeah. Um, you can also look at your shrines. Your 12th house would be a trine of the 8th house and your 4th house as well. Your private nature would be your 4th house. So to say, you have 8th uh, house in Gemini. That means you have 4th uh, house in Aquarius, right? So your home is unlike any other, right? Where you really feel comfortable at and where's, where you are private to is a conversation and also a place that is a bit out of this world. It's out of this world, right? Your home is out of this world because it's Aquarius. So having this communication with others, right? That mutable communication, that thoughts and communication about that deep and dark nature, right? And how it's like, how, how does my fourth house differ from from others uh, fourth houses right and that's that that's finding that eighth house nature that behind the scenes right and somebody else showing you that their home even could really um, enlighten you to it because Aquarius is not going to tell you that they don't know something they're just going to listen right this twelfth house also being in um, Libra so it's going to be like a dreamlike communication so to bring your true dreams out and actually see really like the, the dreams or illusions or nightmares that you're experiencing, it's all about that communication. You see what I'm saying? If, if Scorpio can learn to communicate, they're going to be straight. So yeah, um, really these are, these are key houses if you think about it. You have a water rule chart. You want to pay attention to your water houses. So yeah. Um... I kind of did that, did a little short breakdown of that 12th house. You know, it's like, if you don't have that communication in your life, then you're going to be dreaming about it and kind of maybe communicating with yourself more than others and not really relating, you see what I'm saying? So, you could just kind of stay in your own little space as that Scorpio rising and, and not allow that dreamlike nature to come out. It's like, I like to, you know, 12th house birthing Pisces, right? But your fifth house being Pisces, it's like you're scared to express yourself sometimes. You see what I'm saying? That's that's just uh, how it is for a Scorpio being with that fifth house. You see what I'm saying? But yeah, holla back at me, y'all. I'm gonna do some more uh, uh, videos, whatever, feeling inclined. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, uh, we lit. Holla back at me, y'all. And uh, you know, um, hit me if you need a consultation. You see what I'm saying? Uh, if you check in the comments, I had a conversation about it. In previous video, but I guess that'd be kind of hard to find. So yeah, uh, hit me on uh, conscious1347 at gmail.com. You see what I'm saying for consultations, and uh, yeah, we lit. Peace out, Joel.